What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick, and today I will show you in details the first Control Plus set of 2022, the 42140 App Control Transformation Vehicle. LEGO seems to like these simple tracked RC vehicles, this is the third incarnation in a few years. The other two were still equipped with power functions and the infrared remote. This is also the third Control Plus set with this price tag, representing the most affordable category in the current LEGO RC lineup. So. Third time's a charm as they say, let's see if it fits for this guy here. On the front of the box you can see this strange tracked vehicle barreling through some dirt track, although as always I'm not sure this one is actually recommended to be used outdoors. Now let's see the back of the box quickly. Yeah, this looks like another front box art but with a different vehicle. So this is kind of the main party trick of the set and you can see it being indicated in the bottom left corner. This thing can flip over and run on both sides. It's a quite innovative approach, and it's probably the quickest way ever to have your B-model ready. The blue one is meant to be some sort of rock racer, the orange one is maybe an arctic exploration vehicle. The flipping action is also shown on the side of the box, the recommended way to do it is to drive it against the wall. On the other end, the electronics are shown, there seems to be nothing new here for the first sight, two large motors and the Technic hub. Now let's open the box. The set has 772 pieces, the price is 130 euros or 140 dollars and it will be available from the 1st of March. There are 5 numbered bags in the box, a separate new frame that we will check closely in a minute, the two motors, the manual and the sticker sheet without any extra protection and another small paper box. Now let's see that paper box because if it is what I think it is, then it will be another tick in the box on the list of ongoing LEGO mysteries. So come out, come out. Yes, finally, the screwed hub, I mean the mysterious hub with screws. This thing was playing hide and seek with us since last summer when it was accidentally shown on a photo of the Zetros and for some very curious reason LEGO kept denying its existence ever since. Here's one of the hubs from the previous sets, still unopened. As you see the difference is really in the bottom dark bluish grey part and the lid, everything else seems to be the same. I've seen questions about it, but I don't think the electronics or anything else was updated inside. Let's open the hub, you will of course need a screwdriver for this. Thankfully the screws does not seem to fall out by themselves, they are longer with a smooth section, so you need to unscrew them from the lid if you want to remove them totally, but I don't think you want to do that. The battery insert seems to be the same, they are interchangeable between the hubs. Well, I definitely liked more the previous one with the snap-on lid, but regulations are regulations, we will leave with this one as well. Now to the frame. I see this part for the first time now, but according to the reveal schedule you probably already saw my McLaren F1 review, so I think you are familiar with this. So it's a 3x19 frame, there are two support beams inside to improve the stability, I guess it will be quite useful for bigger builds. Nothing exciting in the manual, the building process is split into 4 stages. At the end there are some brief instructions to control the set, you can see that same wall flip trick that was on the box, and here is the part list if you are interested in this kind of stuff. Before we jump to the first phase, after opening the bags I discovered more new parts, so let's take a closer look at them. New Technic gears, hooray! Well, technically these are not that new unfortunately, they are actually the non-bevel counterparts of these bevel gears, size and number of teeth is the same. So why do we need these, why now? Are there any advantages? There's one obvious disadvantage, you can only mesh these on the same plane, they won't work in a perpendicular way like the bevel gears. About the advantages, it might require further testing but I have two theories right now. The first, these work with chains and the bevel gears don't. Seems like a pretty niche usage and it won't happen in this set for sure, but maybe in another one in the future. The second one is related to the shape of the bevel gears. As you see, these have a plain surface on the side, which means if it is used right next to another part, then the whole surface rubs against that piece, potentially increasing the friction and wear. The new ones, however, have a similar structure to the other standard gears, there is a protruding central section around the axle hole, and only that one is in touch directly with the surrounding parts. This means less friction, less wear, smoother operation. You can even hear the difference, the new one sounds much better. Does it really matter? Well in some cases I think it does. 
Sorry for always bringing up the Defender as a negative example, but I think most of its gearbox issues are related to the sheer complexity of the drivetrain and the amount of gears involved at the same time. As you see, there are several bevel gears in the set used as normal gears, so if we get more of these new ones, it will be actually interesting to test how an updated drivetrain will work, does less friction alone eliminates cracking and the sluggishness of the drivetrain. Ok, enough of the new parts, let's build the set finally. We start with the two motors and some really colorful parts, this is how they are attached to each other. Funny fact, this is this flip flop beam's first appearance in a Technic set in light bluish grey, it was only used so far in the UCS8080 set. And here comes the Technic hub. After reinforcing the structure with a few beams, now it's time to add more gears and these sprocket wheels. As you see the output of the large motors will be geared down. The way this set looks so far, soon we will get more flip flop beams than standard ones in a Technic set. Time to do the proper cable management, it's good to clean them up as they were all around the place. If you think for the first sight that the motor on the purple side does not have a cable long enough for this, then I suggest to double check the instructions, because I made a mistake. If you build on autopilot then you assume a symmetrical placement of parts, but that purple cable holder should be closer to the hub and the cable fits nicely this way. Here comes the new frame piece, and it's actually used in a pretty cool way to improve the structural rigidity of the chassis. We add one of the smaller sprocket wheels, and here's a very interesting way of securing structures with these L-shaped pieces. These flip-flop beams really give us new opportunities to reuse older parts as well. One thing is for sure, taking this set apart won't be an easy walk in the park. The last pieces from the first phase are these angled beams, let's see the second phase. We start building the blue side of the body, and here is this beam in this very flashy new neon yellow color. This is a new LEGO color for 2022, and these are probably the first Technic pieces using it. Here is the new color compared to the regular yellow and orange. After the blue and yellow section we continue on the orange side with the cabin and the details in it. Yet another flip to the blue side, it's interesting to switch between them during building. This side gets a different control device, we had a steering wheel on the orange one. We are almost finished with the cabins, time to attach the assembly to the main one. These shock absorbers are the key to the flipping mechanism. You can see now how this will work. The rear section with the hub and the motors and the frame holding the wheels stay in place, the inner section with the cabins flips from one side to the other and the shock absorbers hold it in position. A neat little mechanism with this rubber band, this is how the rear spoiler of the blue side will disappear when it is flipped over, pretty cool. Some toilet paper roll pieces for the rear spoiler, and this is how it works. So here we are at the end of phase 2, cabins are finished but some bodywork is still missing. This is probably the first Technic set where I see stickers being applied on both sides of a panel fairing. Do you know any other occasions when this happened? Let me know in the comments. A few more details and the bodywork is finished. Ok, the rest of the build will be probably a bit less interesting. Luckily it doesn't take that much time to assemble and mount the bogies, but if you think this was boring, then you won't like the very last phase at all. We get 96 of these rubber band inserts, which is amazing, they last time appeared in the 42069 Extreme Adventure set, but that much bigger one only got like half of this amount. Based on the average brickling price, this little heap in my hand is worth like 20 euros or dollars alone, which shows how insanely expensive these things is worth so far. There's also another interesting thing with these track pieces. Although the element ID is the same as before, the surface is matte black. Here are some older pieces on the left, not sure how visible it is on camera, but these pieces used to be shiny black, and now they are matte black. It's probably more visible on the other side. So, this part was really no fun, and my finger hurts. So you probably want to outsource this section of the build, but at least now we are finished. So here is our completed set, at least one side of it, and here is the other one. Time to add the batteries, the days of the quick swaps are clearly over. It's also a bit challenging to access the battery compartment due to the sidewalls and railings, but the swap can be done in about a minute. Here's a beta version of the updated Control Plus app, and it actually got a brand new interface. It's great to see smaller photos to access the different sets, it required too much scrolling previously to go from one end to the other. We need to turn the vehicle to the blue side to switch it on. The process starts of course with the firmware update, I will show you this neat little switch mechanism meanwhile, works pretty well. Now this is how the basic control works, we've got two sliders for each tracks. Maybe it's my phone or the beta version, but sometimes the movements were not detected on one of the tracks. 
you really need to drive the vehicle against an obstacle to flip it over. As you see, the design of the app changes as well and it adjusts the direction of the controllers automatically using the gyro sensor in the hub. The best is to do the flipping action forward. It might work backwards, but as you see, sometimes the hit on the bottom is not hard enough to push the body up. If you go forward, then it works all the time. We've got two buttons for a quick rotation in both directions. Although its length is a bit unpredictable, sometimes it seems to be longer for no reason. We also get the usual telemetry data towards the top and also a battery level indicator in the top right corner. With this button at the bottom you can access two minigames, depending on the side of the vehicle that is active. The blue one requires you to pass through gates and you have a radar helping you. In the game on the orange side you need to find fuel cells to refuel the vehicle. A big open space is required for both, actually bigger than the one I have here. Honestly, I'm not a fan of these minigames, but you probably know this. It would be great to have some physical accessories to interact with. These invisible targets and the need to focus on the app while I am driving around in the room is more frustrating than enjoyable for me. So, is it fun to drive around at all? I think so. The flipping function works fine most of the time, just don't try it backwards. Interestingly, that wing does touch the ground during flipping. If you go through the motion sequence manually, then it even can stand on it. Not sure how scratched those pieces will be after a few months. The rest of the body seems to be okay. The small wheels are only there to push the body fortunately. On a flat surface they don't touch the ground. There's not much ground clearance though. You can fit two plates under the vehicle, but it might already catch three, which is still only the height of one Lego brick. The other side seems to be a bit better can go through one brick, but that's all. The output of the large motor is geared down to ensure the required amount of torque to flip it over. The rubber inserts also help with this. The set is definitely meant to be used indoors, despite all the fancy graphics on the box. I did not take it outside due to the weather. If you would like to see some outdoor action, then I suggest to check Saria's review. Now let's compare it to the previous Power Functions track racers. As you can see, the speed is okay, but slightly slower than the other two. But honestly, the stunt racer is almost impossible to be controlled in this configuration. If we check the climbing abilities, on the other hand, then it's the other way around. The stunt racer cannot do anything. With this center of gravity and setup, it cannot climb anything practically. The RC track racer performs better, but without the rubber inserts, the tracks start to slip quickly. The new contestant has a very impressive performance, can climb 42 degrees without an issue and would even climb more but at 45 degrees it already flips over. What I'm still desperately missing is a physical remote. I'm sure it's possible to use the powered up remote with some custom code in the powered up app or Pybricks, but the lack of proportional control still makes that solution less fun than it could be. So how to sum it up? This is the entry level 2022 Control Plus set from LEGO, although at 130 euros it is still not cheap. Well, if we consider the individual powered up parts, that is still cheaper than a hub and two large motors, but that only shows how expensive those things are separately. Currently LEGO offers two RC sets with this price, this one and the off-road buggy. The Top Gear Rally car was also similar, but that's already retired officially. I would say that from these two I would choose the new one, it's a way more interesting build with more parts and the flipping functionality might also offer more fun than the buggy. But this is only valid in LEGO context, you can obviously buy much better RC toys for this price. On the plus side, this can be a nice parts pack and a solid base for any tracked RC builds, especially with the rubber inserts. Please share your thoughts about the set in the comments. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up. I strongly suggest to subscribe with notifications as I'm still not done with the March 2022 reviews and other goodies. So see you next time, bye bye.